So, hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm uh, Jesse, and I'm going to be doing part two now for uh, making a drill powered uh, spindle sander. So, in part one, I made this case for it, I put the drill in, and I've put those together with some pen nails for now. I'll glue them up later. And then I stopped because it started raining and it was, uh, I had a problem. So it stopped raining now, I can work. Last, uh, last time, uh, last video, part one, I had this, uh, kind of set up like this and I was going to make inserts that fit each drum because I have different size sanding drums, some even this big. Uh, but now I've decided that's going to be too hard. I found it really difficult. So what I'm going to do, I cut a new piece of plywood. I just did that. And I'm just going to do one hole, and it's going to be the size of the largest drum. Which means I might not be able to do tiny little pieces of wood on here. But I don't think I'll be doing that anyway, so it's not a big problem. So let's uh, drill that hole now. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to utilize the fact that this is a drill under here, and put a drill bit in, and then I'll lower this down on top, and that should be good. Because this drill is just like floating in space here, it, um... It's somewhere in here, but it's not an easy way to measure. So I'll just lower it down, and then I'll have my pilot hole, and I'll use this big paddle to uh, make the large hole. So yeah, let's do that. So now I have this set up so that I can just lower this on in between these two boards so that I get it perfectly centered, and that should work pretty well. Let's do it. So now I have that I have the hole in the piece of wood, it's a little bit too small, so I'm actually going to be using the sander to make it a bit bigger. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Okay, so now you can see that's on there. And it's been really cool over the past few days watching this come to life. Uh, let me bring this over to the other side. I have it on the end of a long tripod, so it might look a little jittery. But you can see the drill inside of there, maybe. There we go. Um, so it's really cool. Uh, this side is going to be on a hinge, so I'll be able to get in there. That's how I'm going to turn the drill on and off. And uh, you can see inside of there I have quite a few blocks holding the drill in, because I had a hard time keeping the top uh, square at 90 degrees. So, uh, this is a how-to video, so if you're building this, uh, make sure to keep it right at 90 degrees. But yeah, let's uh, nail the top on, glue it together, put the hinges on, and then I'll be done. Oh, I almost forgot. I need a hole for the vacuum so that I don't make dust everywhere. Um, I almost completely forgot. Uh, I just went to the hardware store and I got this piece, which is an adapter for a hole that'll probably be in there. I'm going to drill it right now. So, uh, let's drill that hole. On second thought, I'm going to wait until I nail the top in, because then there's less things to carry outside of the garage here. As you can see, it definitely is still raining. So, uh, I don't want to bring it out for longer than I have to. So, let's nail the top on. So, now I'm going to, uh, drill the hole for the vacuum. And, uh... Here I've got my big uh, one and a half inch, or yeah, one and a half inch paddle bit, and I'm gonna drill the hole right here so it's on the opposite side of the drill so that it doesn't get uh, tangled up with the drill or anything. So I'm probably gonna do it. Yeah, that looks about good. I want to get it pretty close to this edge. You'll see in a minute why. This paddle bit is really big, and it creates a lot of torque, so I have to hold the drill here with my uh, thigh. Ah, this drill is hard to hold. Oh, man. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this off camera for a minute. I'll get you back on once it's cut. Okay, just got that done. It took some elbow grease to do that. So uh, now let's uh, get the vacuum port ready. So the way this is going to work... Uh, hopefully it isn't too hard to hear me. The rain has picked up a little bit. 
But basically, this is gonna fit into here. I'm gonna wrap some duct tape around it so it fits snugly. And then uh, this I'm gonna sand down a bit because I don't need it so big so it can sit closer. And then this will connect to the vacuum tube. So yeah, that should be pretty good. You'll probably see in a minute, once I get all that done, what it's gonna look like. Okay, next I gotta do the hinges. And uh, I'm not really gonna explain much how they work because it's pretty rainy and I, I uh, I think it's pretty loud in the camera, so I'm just going to do a big time lapse and you'll see how it works. I'll explain it afterwards. So now I've got those hinges on, and as you can see, they open up really well, and I can turn it on and off. And so, yeah, you, now you'll probably have a nice montage of me using it. Actually, I almost forgot. Before I can do the montage, I have to glue it, and I have to put the vacuum port in. So I'm going to glue it now, and once it's dry tomorrow, I'll put the vacuum port in, and then you'll get your montage. Okay, now all the glue's in, and I'm gonna let it dry overnight, so see you tomorrow. So it's actually later the same night, and I just wanted to update you that I just added this little 3D printed latch. And it's really cool uh, that it's 3D printed, and you see it opens up like that, and this can open, and then it closes like that. Uh, like, let's see, can I do it? There we go, like that. Oh, no, like that. And uh, I'll leave a link to it in the description if you have a 3D printer. But if you don't, don't worry, it is not needed. It just uh, makes it a little bit more secure. So yeah, I'll see you in the morning. Okay, so it's the next morning. And uh, as you can see in here, the glue is all dry. And I have this vacuum attachment that I just made. And I'll explain to you for a minute how it works. So here's the hose from my shop vac. So let's take that off there so we can see. Let's take this out of here. And basically this is the joint that I came up with. So I have an adapter here. I don't remember what size it is. I think this side is one and a half inch and maybe that one's threaded half inch maybe. And uh, by, by putting some tape around there, making it a bit larger, it fits really snugly onto the vac hose. So then I have a one and a half inch threaded adapter to three quarter inch. And I put a tiny bit of three quarter inch pipe in there just to extend the length a little bit, get it to fit better. But uh, that outside of the three quarter inch fitting fits the hole perfectly. And that's a uh, one and a half inch uh, hole cut by my paddle uh, hole cutter thingy. So uh, yeah, just with some tape that goes in there and the hose goes right on there and it should work. Okay, so I hope you liked that short montage. Uh, a few of those clips with that soft wood were actually uh, all in real time. There was only one clip that was sped up, and you'll probably be able to know which one it was. But yeah, it was pretty cool how fast it can sand, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Also, because there's some extra space in here, I can store the cord, the adapter for the vacuum, and all of the extra stuff, like the other uh, drums and stuff, all inside of here, along with the drill. So everything that you need is all in this one little package. Yeah, that's all for this video, and uh, go find one of these videos over there, or uh, go to my channel and find another one, uh, and I'll see you in a few seconds.